we'll see how things work out for game number two, whether we see that ban um, coming into it. And we see yeah, Urgot has definitely been a common ban so far, so early on. I mean, this is the first week of qualifiers, and we're still, still seeing, you know, like, the Urgot's just banned almost every time. And we may very well see that here, but Udir, once again, playing it safe for TCM, they want him out of the fight. I mean, he's been, he's been coming back. Udir's definitely been coming back recently, I feel. Yeah, I mean, he's he's always been around. He's yeah. just an all-around, you know, great champion. Um, like we said earlier, he's got the versatility. He can go top or jungle, and he's one of the strongest at both roles. Uh, yeah, it kind of makes him kind of a bland champion. I'll be honest. I'm not the biggest, you know, Udir <laughs> fan, but um, they he's aren't so either. Many... They're going to ban him, get him out of there. He's got so many animal friends. He's, he he's, does he's, have a number he's, of animal he's, friends. Uh, he's, he's the wilderness bear. He's, he's the wilderness man. Yeah. Forest man. <laughs> Making friends I with all like the woodland creatures. In that, but we'll, we'll, we'll skip we'll that for skip now. That we'll skip that, we'll skip that for now because we got a Lee Sin ban once again. We're looking at almost near the same bans as last game from TCM. Uh, Soraka now being banned out by uh, Salad Supreme because you know, remember, we did also have uh, the Soraka heal to also even stack even more armor onto Urgot in addition to the Frozen Heart and the Aegis and the ult. Like, uh, you know, I, I kind of want to go back. To look at exactly how much armor Urgot had in the middle of those team fights. Now it's got it, it's must have been something ridiculous over 200 for sure. Yeah, I mean particularly with Soraka, uh, you know it's really just too tough to deal with. So they didn't have the damage for it. Ari actually being banned out for TCM. So mm. uh, you saw a couple of times early Ari was able to pick up a couple of kills. Yeah, you know if, if they could maybe get out get rid of that tanky team then Ari still was a very strong champion so um, disallowing those mid champions that they're favorable for we saw last time TCM actually had to ban Morgana I think no actually it was Sound Supreme still yeah um, so you know pretty common uh, similar bans but once again TCM going to be picking Urgot we yep. saw how devastating he was in that last game how much he was able to take control of the game so yep. we'll see what he does this time but Varus is open now Varus was banned game one he's not been banned here Hi, Varus versus Urgot. Do you think that'd be uh, favorable? See, it's weird because um, in lane, it should be a pretty even matchup. Varus has obviously the longer range, so he can use yeah. the range to his advantage. Uh, he's got a lot of burst damage. So actually, if Urgot uh, even gets the E, if he gets the lock on onto Varus, Varus, rather than having to run away, could almost just sit there and be like, all right, you want to go? We'll fight right here. Let's go. Uh, yeah, let's, let's throw <laughs> down and just, you know, do the damage. But later on in the game, Varus... Um, I'm, I'm curious whether or not the snare blocks the Urgot ult, and that's the concern, because Varus doesn't have that uh, mobility that Graves has, so if Varus gets too close, Urgot you know, chases him down. They have, uh, I believe, the same movement speed. Varus might be slightly faster, but they're, they're probably the same. So Ur if Urgot gets the ult onto Varus, then Varus is just, you know, SOL. He's done. He, you know, he doesn't have any way of getting out of there, um, so we'll have to see. Dude, Karma Jarvin. Wow, we have not seen Karma in a while. Uh, that's that'll be interesting, at least. I mean, Karma, Karma's interesting because she has, um, she's actually kind of like Lulu. Karma and Lulu are very similar champions, but Karma he, uh, has a lot of burst potential, uh, has a lot of survivability for your team. The only concern is that right now Karma is short range. She doesn't have any disables. Jarvan is, you know, getting in that melee range, and we have uh, Karthus. So Karthus is going to have all that AOE damage, and you know they're not going to have a way of dealing with it. And then at Lulu as well. So Karthus and Lulu. I'm not sure whether or not that'll be a Lulu support or a Lulu top lane. Maybe uh, Karthus or Kar Kar sorry, Karthus jungle. Kar Karthus jungle. <laughs> I guess it's, it must be, no, it's Urga, uh, Karthus is definitely mid, there's no question there, but I guess Lulu's going to support since they don't have that Soraka pick. Um, I would have thought they would have wanted to go for someone like Janna, but, uh, you know, we'll have to see. Lulu, gen just generally a really strong pick, has that burst, you know, shielding capability, so uh, able to keep her team alive. So, yes, yeah, so then we got Cassiopeia and Pantheon. Wow. Now, we're going crazy here for Salad Supreme. I'm liking this. I'm liking this a lot. It was just, you know, get the I mean, come in with the dunk on Jarvan, and Pantheon can just ult in to the middle of the crater. 
I would like to see that. I'd and love now, to see that. It's interesting. Um, I had mentioned last game how they needed someone like Cassiopeia for that sustained damage. And so yeah. Cassiopeia has a lot of that uh, damage potential. A lot of these melee champions, these very close range champions for TCM, they're all going to be clumped up in the AoE for Cassiopeia so they can burst people down and then have that long team fight uh, sustained. But then bottom lane is going to be the interesting matchup because I thought maybe uh, Karma would be played as an AP mid champion uh, so she can get up that quick burst. Mm. But we might be seeing Pantheon and Karma bot lane. Car uh, Pantheon could go top lane. Uh, some people, you know, play him like that. But I I wouldn't be surprised to see Pantheon in that bottom lane. He can exchange harass with almost anyone in the game. He would actually beat Ur Urgot in lane. So Urgot versus Pantheon, he has the advantage. And then when he jumps on, he's got the burst uh, damage from Karma as well. So yeah. uh, Pantheon jumps on you, you use the Karma shield, you throw off a ton of AoE damage, you have the burst from Pantheon. That's actually a really aggressive lane if that's what they're intending to run. Though uh, uh, both Karma and Pantheon could go in that top lane, uh, so we'll have to see you know, who Barry Nice is going to pick up here. Not to mention that you also have the Pantheon passive as well, so he's going to be extremely well protected if that is what we're thinking, but we actually we got the Corky pickup, so we're looking, we're probably going to be having a Karma, Karma Corky bot lane. Huh. But yeah, it's, well, it's yeah. weird because I, I'm not sure how, I mean, <laughs> Karma and Corky obviously don't combo that well, they do have the shield. Uh, from Karma to help out Corky, and with yeah. the heal on Corky, it is, they will be going that bottom lane. I was thinking maybe there's a little bit of potential for um, you know them to go in that top lane, uh, for Corky to go top lane, because uh, you do see that a couple of times. But Corky and Karma uh, should be a pretty interesting matchup. Corky versus Urgot is a pretty even matchup. Corky has a lot of burst damage, um, and you know has the survivability with the Valkyrie, so we'll be okay there. But Karma, all all she's really going to be in lane is a shield. So yeah. they really want the Karma pick for later in the game. You know, Karma versus Lulu. Lulu has the advantage, uh, but they it, it'll hopefully be pretty even. But l as the game progresses, we have those burst shields from Karma uh, to go onto like Jarvan or something. I'm a little bit surprised though if they wanted to pick up Karma, why didn't they just pick Lulu? Because uh, in my mind, Lulu is kind of a stronger version of Karma right now. I mean, that's just how she's designed. They're very similar champions. Um, Karma has a little bit more burst damage, so. Maybe that's what they're going for, but it'll be interesting to see. You know, obviously, this is a champion that they've played to a great extent. They've played a number of times. They love the Karma pick for some reason. Um, you know, she is a very fun champion. She's a great dueling champion, much like Lulu is. So we'll have to see how she works out for them. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think I think they're definitely going for a team that I, I feel this team centers a lot around Jarvan. Because, you know, Jarvan, he, he, he has his ult, and he's going to keep everyone in a very contained area for the shield. Right. The Cassiopeia ult, the the uh, Pantheon ult, the Corky ult. It's kind of yeah. like, I, f I feel there's a lot of ult synergy with Cell Supreme's team, but a lot of it depends on Jarvan. Yeah, they have kind of a um, wonky kind of AoE comp, but they also have nice single target bursts. You know, Cassiopeia yeah. has it. Uh, Pantheon obviously has it. So that'll be inter interesting. Top lane, Pantheon versus Jax. Um, I believe Pantheon would have the advantage, but as, uh, it's tough to say. I, I don't know if Pantheon can get enough damage. Early on, Pantheon definitely has the advantage. He's got the spear spam yeah. over Jax. He is a very aggressive laner. Uh, and then he's also got the shield to block some of Jax's damage. As it progresses, Jax just has enough killing potential that, you know, we'll have to see. If Jax gets any early advantage, he could probably just jump on Pantheon and duel with him and, you know, should be able to come out ahead in that. Again, we have the, uh, the Nautilus ganks, so Nautilus is going to be very aggressive and Pantheon definitely vulnerable in that top lane. Um, it'll be very difficult for him to survive ganks, so they need early ward coverage. That's going to be key. Uh, Jarvan has very aggressive ganks as well, but if you can dodge his standard, then you know very quickly you're going to be okay. So we'll have to see. Jarvan is another you know level 2 ganker. So two aggressive junglers going at it with a number of uh, aggressive champions in lane to deal damage. Yep, so, but we'll also see how well uh, the Urgot will do once again. And we've, 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 the people we've banned out from last game that were you know, the big, you know, some of the big game changers, and just Soraka, just with that shield. But we still have Urgot. He's still open. He's still available, and he's one of the top uh, AD carries right now. And if he can get the sufficient harass he needs on bot lane, if Corky falls behind, that's a lot of damage that's going to be out of Cell Supreme's team fights later on. And you know, with this Karma pick, they're looking to build late. So if we get sufficient denial, bot lane. Or top lane, it's it's really it's really going to hinder them later on. 
Yeah, that's definitely the case, though. They, they do have pretty strong lane matchups. Cassiopeia versus Karthus. Uh, Cath Cassiopeia has a little bit of an advantage as far as damage, but yep. Karthus obviously has enough range that he's going to be able to farm, so that's primarily going to turn into a free farm lane. They're not going to want to duel at all. Well, Cassiopeia is going to want to duel, but Karthus yeah. isn't going to let her. He can outrange her. <laughs> um, you know, top lane, Jax is primarily going to want to farm, so we have a lot of kill potential with Pantheon. Um, I would probably expect to see Jarvan trying to pick up early kills there, but we'll see whether or not that works out for them. Uh, you know, we Salad Supreme really needs to get off to a good start for this team, but they have lots of AoE damage. Yep. One of the things that's really exciting about Salad Supreme's team is they have such great buff control and Baron control and Dragon control. Cassiopeia and Jarvan are two of the strongest champions in the game at taking Baron. Uh, Jarvan can tank it very easily and you know won't take any damage, so you're very safe for fights coming up. Yep. And then Cassiopeia has that burst damage. But on the other side, Karthus as well is very strong, uh, so there's always a threat for you know those kind of objectives early or a fast dragon or something. Yeah, but we also we had this discussion yesterday with uh, Mendigilo. Was you know they're going for a sort of AOE comp in their set, and you have to be a very well coordinated team to pull off AOE comps. So, but we're we're at uh, I think we're at a little bit of a higher skill level with uh, Salad Supreme. So we will see if they can go ahead and pull off this comp in game two. That's actually interesting because one of the things with uh, AOE comps is it's it's a pretty common strategy for newer teams. Mm. Um, you know, this isn't really a heavy AOE comp. They have a lot of AOE damage, yeah. but it's primarily, you know, they're just looking for lane sustain and early aggression. Um, but AOE comps are actually the easiest comps to, you know, coordinate new teams. And so right. you look for uh, how you can pick up kills. Obviously, you know, if you're going to run a poke comp or something like that, that is very high on the list of mm. uh, skill level required. It's very difficult to run um, a number of different comps. Where if, is if you get an AoE, you can just win team fights. And so they have the AoE damage where they can hopefully just win a team fight outright and uh, then you know see how you go from there if you can you know pursue that at all. But right now, they are grouping up in this top. We'll be coming down into this blue, taking the long path. So we'll see whether or not we have an early uh, fight coming up. Hey, you know, TCM, they were built, you're, they were once again, in the mid, waiting to see if anyone was going to show up, and we're going to go ahead and laugh in this bush while we're at it. But I see Nautilus has now come up to guard that entrance just a tad too late. Doesn't have any idea that Salad Supreme is actually already in their stuff, waiting into this blue bush. <laughs> they're going in. The wolves have been pinged, so they're going to go ahead and camp that a little area there. Lulu and Urgot are in the bot lane. They're not going to be there to help the rest of the team. And Panther now coming around. We got Jax leading the charge. He's going to be unfortunately checking that bush real quick. And Corky comes in for the first blood. Everyone got a helping hand in that one. Everyone got an assist. Corky got the kill. Wonderful start for Salad Supreme. Yeah, and they're still chasing him out. Uh, able to get that first kill is going to be huge. Corky actually able to grab it, so he will be able to go back um, and you know pick up another item if he likes. Let's see, he's got 445, so he could, he actually no, no, the uh, chain vest. No, so no, 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 cloth vest, cloth vest. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, cloth armor. Um, and that's interesting because you know Urgot, he will have plenty of. Uh, damage in that bottom lane. He's actually coming into the top, so that's actually one of the things Ooh. I was thinking was that Corky might come into the top lane, and that's what they're trying to do. So now we have a completely different story. The lanes <laughs> make sense. I thought they might try this out, but I wasn't positive, because now we have this Pantheon and Karma lane bottom, which uh, it is a very aggressive lane. Like we said earlier, Pantheon has the you know harass. He can exchange well with um, Urgot, and then he's got the burst damage with Karma to pick up those kills. Corky, on the other hand, is actually a pretty strong top lane, has the mobility. We do see Jarvan coming in here, and Karthus comes up a little bit too close. He does have that early level two. He's coming in. There's the pop-up, so he's got the red buff as well. A lot of damage going off onto Ube. He will not go down very close. Oh. The Ignite actually would have done it, but they won't be able to pick up that kill. Ignite went down and was used by Cassiopeia in that earlier invade. If Pantheon used his instead, she would have had, we've gotten that kill instead. But you know what? Karthus is hurting immensely in mid lane, so that's good enough for us. But Jax getting some sufficient harass here on Corky in the top lane, popping some healing potions. Uh, but you know that uh, that cloth armor doing what it needs to do, and a very good early pickup with that first blood money. 
Now, so it's interesting, this Corky versus um, Jack's top lane. That Cloth Armor is huge, obviously, uh, to be able to, you know, get rid of some of that damage. We actually have uh, Pantheon and Karma jumping onto Urgot here. This is, is the exhaust? burst they have, but Car uh, they're actually going to win this fight. So the exhaust onto Pantheon, they pick up that kill. Jarvan, Jarvan with the flash, not going to be able to pick up Urgot because he just flashes right out of there. So they're chasing Lulu a little bit. Wheel back up for a second. Uh, Jarvan's still kind of hanging out, but that didn't work out for them. They almost burst down um, Urgot, but Lulu is just such a strong dueler early on they weren't able to pick it up but we actually almost have the pop-up that would have been a kill but he wasn't quite able to get it so he will back out now and the early advantage going to bot lane and once again um sorry what i was saying earlier with corky is that corky does pretty well against a lot of top lanes the only issue is that Jax has enough burst that you know he can chunk corky throw off the stun and then run away and get free harass on corky but if corky can harass with that range harass uh they will be pretty successful so we got nautilus standing guard in their own jungle expecting jarvin to come in for the invade and they were right the red is still up for tcm oh, jarvin what are you doing he's swooping around trying to steal the golems but they are not there so like oh man their red's still here i wonder if i should go grab it and lulu's here nautilus is here and he's gonna find a very rude present in that bush nautilus just plugging away at him as he's trying to get away will we be able to stand it over to pit yes he will and just barely getting away through the dragon pit and so Jarvan does have that kind of survivability. He can get out of there. I'm a little bit surprised. Uh, Jarvan came down into this bottom, and um, you know when you turn this corner, you can be seen by the minions. So I don't. I, I, he just barely didn't. So he thought he was still safe, um, mm -hmm. but you know probably needed to get out of there already. I mean, obviously he didn't recognize what was going on. We have the good ward coverage early on. So what he probably recognizes now, uh, because he was caught out of position there, is he's telling his team, okay, they've got wards leading into their jungle. I'm not going to do that again. Yeah, <laughs> uh, you know we'll we'll sit back and see how it works. But Corky doing okay in this top lane will want to back off. Has the farm advantage early on versus Jax, but Jax will be able to pick up a number of kills, obviously underneath this tower. So Pantheon bot lane going up against the Urgot. The creep kills are actually even, but we saw we had all the summer spells being burned in that last little uh, that last little uh, last little fight there. But Shields from Karma doing what they can to try and protect Pantheon. He's, his passive does proc every once in a while. But it seems for the moment Urgot's actually out uh, doing a little bit more damage. Well, actually, the concern is primarily Lulu. And so mm. Urgot versus um, Pantheon, he does proc his shield on, you know, attacks, his jump, and also his Q. But he's actually going to jump onto Lulu. They have a lot of burst damage, but they're not going to have enough. We have the, uh, you know, picks going off onto uh, Pantheon. They will chase them out a little bit. And so without the heal, they will be at an advantage there. But we actually have Jarvan coming once again. He will get the pop-up onto Karthus. Karthus does ha uh, not have the flash. So actually, uh, Cassiopeia coming in here did throw off the ultimate. They are able to pick up that kill, get some damage onto Nautilus and then get out of there. Uh, Karthus, you know, doesn't have that ultimate yet, but still not enough damage, um, you know, onto Jarvan. Yeah. So an early advantage in mid lane. Yeah, even if he did have it, it would have been just a nothing, for, just a waste for nothing. We got the Pantheon coming in and the Spears actually, the tail end actually catching Lulu just a little bit. So now we see the continued aggression here that Cell Supreme wants to make on bot, but Pantheon very low on health right now. No health potions right now, and Karma's, uh, Karma's fans can only heal so much at these low levels. But uh, Jax now coming once again for some harass onto Corky, forces the Valkyrie away, getting ready for that stun, but he just decides to wait. He's like, oh, okay, if I burned, you burned a little bit of, a little bit of jet fuel on that one, I'm happy. And while that's, uh, you know, jump and everything, or the leap and everything are down, that's when Corky wants to be aggressive again, try and get that harass back. Um, needs to exchange very well. Not a lot of mana on Urgot right now, so, you know, Pantheon and uh, Karma, they know they can still be aggressive. The issue is Lulu, Lulu, Lulu's still fine, has a lot of burst damage, yep. and Lulu is what's crushing this bottom lane. Uh, whenever Pantheon's coming in, we have the burst from Lulu, and then, you know, she's such a great duelist, she can keep Urgot alive. And then also the, um, uh, whatever the, I always forget, Whimsy, uh, she can use the Whimsy for the Disable, disrupt his combo, and so, um, you know, he's not able to get quite the damage that he wants to in that bottom lane. So just yeah, anything, anytime you need to, just you know, we got we got the it's the cupcake glue that. So I, I'm getting it's almost lunchtime. I'm getting hungry now, damn. Um, but Pantheon here continuing to fart. Now we're we're being pushed a little bit. TCM's pushing bot, uh, bot lane a little bit too far out. But Nautilus now coming up, trying to get the jump here on Barry. Nice as Corky, he is here. Just one auto attack. He's rooted as he lands. Just for a short amount of time, he does Valkyrie away in time. So I'm thinking we should be seeing, I'd highly recommend Pantheon go back and buy 
relatively soon because we do have Vision on Lulu backing. So there should be a nice little indication for Cell Supreme to go ahead and back out. But Karma does take a chunk and TCM's bot lane is going to go back to do some shopping. Yeah, and so right now they know because they're low on mana, they're probably going to back off. So Pantheon and Karma will want to push this lane pretty quickly if they can to the tower. Um, I don't think they're going to have enough time to do it, though. But if they can, then they can maybe deny some experience. Cassiopeia going to come over for this blue buff, which is huge. And if they can get some map control early on, there's always the potential for them to pick up the gold advantage with the dragon. Cassiopeia doing very well in that mid lane. But Karthus, obviously, you know, the longer the game goes, he is a super, uh, you know, carry mid champion. And so he will be able to farm there. We do have the ping going off from Jarvan, though. It's just a green ward, so he doesn't have, uh, you know, know that the enemy doesn't have vision. Uh, but there's still the option there. Yeah where you know he does have that Riggles build. So they have a ton of damage for Dragon, and then obviously later on for Baron because he's not going that tank build. Yep, TCM pinged it down as like, hey guys, we're, we're getting to that part in time here. We gotta get a ward by Dragon, not knowing that the Cell Supreme actually beat them to the punch. So they know that TCM has warded in front of Dragon area, so we'll see if they do anything about that. And we also got some offensive wards coming in from Cell Supreme as well, right in the Tri-Road area, right before Wraiths. So we will see Nautilus coming in, trying to be sneaky as well. Jarvan grabbing the red in the process. And uh, yeah, we see Nautilus trying to make an attempt on mid, but you know what? That good ward coverage, keeping Cassiopeia safe. And you saw the issue with this bottom lane. Uh, when TCM, you know, went back, they uh, didn't, you know, they, their lane was pushed up. We actually see both Jarvan and Nautilus coming in here. Neither of them are really going to have a great gank potential, but Karthus may be baiting it out a little bit, uh, coming pretty far forward, and Nautilus coming around the backside, so we will have a fight. Uh, we actually have a fight going down bottom, but this is probably where the big action's coming, so we have the Karthus wall up. There's the ultimate, and so we have the pull in, so we do have the Nautilus knock up. They have some great damage there. Karthus is going to go down. In the meantime, in this bottom lane, uh, Urgot, you know, and uh, Lulu, they are winning this fight. They are able to chase down Karma there. Jarvan will get out of that mid lane, but but we have Karma going down, and now Pantheon will go down as well. We have the shield. He doesn't have enough damage, so TCM able to win a couple of fights there. There's a one-for-one one exchange, and then the bottom lane going in their favor. Yeah, and actually, if I, I can look back a second, we can look back at uh, how this fight went on a little bit since we you know missed some of it. We actually have the Urgot swap early on. Uh, the double exhaust and just Lulu has just too much shield advantage for them to be able to you know control this fight at all. So we see Pantheon come back, and we also see Urgot dipping in and out of the bush. I mean, it is still worse, so you still get their damage in, but uh, Karma is being focused down immediately. They're trying to focus. You see, we see Cell Supreme trying to focus down the carry, and you see TCM focusing down the support. If they focused Lulu in that fight, I feel she would have gone down immensely faster because remember, they also started focusing Urgot post ult when he has extra armor, extra resistance. A little bit of a misstep from Cell Supreme. Yeah, and right now, um, neither team taking the dragon advantage off of that, but uh, even so, we get a couple of kills, and Jax with that burst against Corky, but now Corky's turning back onto him. We have the Ignite coming off after the heal, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, very nice, able to pick up that kill on Kungan. Uh, that's going to be great, but we have Nautilus coming into this top lane. Uh, we'll see whether or not Corky can avoid that. Farfane coming in through the tri-brush, and this is the same thing as game number one. We had the lane warded, not the bush warded. We got the root coming in onto Barry Nice, and the car to assault to ensure Nautilus, Nautilus doesn't even bother attack. He's like, you know what? Let's, let's give it to Karthus. <laughs> And if Garthus gets those kills, that's going to be huge. You see, he actually grabbed the Dorans, but then he's tr uh, turning into a Rod of Ages kind of build. He wants to be yep. tanky up front. Uh, one of the concerns for Salad Supreme is we do have, you know, a lot of melee kind of champions. Um, their AD bottom, you know, Pantheon, he's going to want to get up close, but he needs the damage. So Pantheon getting some early damage. Jarvan going with the early Madreds for the Wriggles. So that gives them great dragon control, but it means Jarvan's not as tanky as he is going to want to be later. So when Jarvan is jumping onto someone like Karthus, he's going to very quickly go down to all of that AoE damage uh, and not have the same fight control that they would want. That's kind of partially where Karma comes in because she will have the you know burst shield there so that yep. you know helps them out a little bit but Jarvan in this bottom lane he is going to be able to jump on them if he goes in there's actually this pounce from Pantheon they come on to Lulu the Lulu ult though is going to be able to get him out of there but the Jarvan <laughs> ult with the follow-up and Pantheon can't get in right now he's coming off to the backside we do have the Urgot swap going what to pull Pantheon oh. out of the way and so they are going to be able to get out of there Lulu got in Lulu got out of there with like single digit health it is so incredibly unfortunate but you know what they have now disadvantage bot lane wave is pushing ergot is going to be forced to farm at tower just for a few moments this could be a good dragon opportunity for uh for salad supreme if they want to take it but cassiopeia 
She does not know she's going to get 3v1 here at her own tower. We got the pull, but wonderful ult getting all three members of TCM in that. That was beautiful, and that ult does not have a big range. Here we get all three members of TCM with that. was amazing. Yeah, unfortunately not able to pick up the kill. Farfate doesn't want to get in here, but we actually had the flash from Jarvan followed up by Pantheon, so they're able to grab the kill there. Uh, and going back to that fight down bottom, I just still think it's fantastic how Urgot, he actually, you know, moved and positioned himself so he could swap with Pantheon. One more spear would have killed uh, Lulu earlier, uh, but the great ultimate swap helping him out. But they're coming in on this dragon. They're going to be able to pick this up. And so Salad Supreme able to take the early advantage with their very unusual comp. Oh, we got the ult from Pantheon coming in onto bot lane. Urgot's not going to be able to get out of the way. We got the speed boost. We got picks doing something to Pantheon, trying to keep him away but uh, you know we got the wave and Urgot's gonna be able to get away from that but I think we have all five members we have all five members of Salad Supreme here down on the bot lane but you know what they're all gonna recall play it safe except for Corky he's gonna get uh, a little little face of acid before he has to go back yeah and unfortunately Pantheon didn't have enough mana for his uh, you know jump so he, he couldn't get the stun onto Urgot yeah. that would have uh, that successfully gotten them the kill but in the meantime while Salad Supreme is running around trying to pick up kills bottom, it's been working out for them. But TCM has to be kind of laughing to themselves because they're like, okay, well, you go bottom and we're just going to allow Jax to free farm top <laughs> and take your turret. And now Jax has a huge uh, farm advantage here. Uh, actually, not huge. He's caught back up to Corky. But even so, he is going to be devastating in this mid game. Um, you know, we'll see how he builds, but he is, you know, a threat for Salad Supreme to have to deal with. Yeah, you know, with that attack speed, uh, steroid. Jax is definitely one of the best, what one of the top characters if you just want to just flat out take a tower. Mm -hmm. You just there, just whack, 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 whack. And the, you can see what the damage has been done to top tower. And he's very strong against physical teams, obviously with that dodge. So, yep. you know, having Jarvan, Pantheon, Corky, all of them will be kind of shut down by Jax. It's just whether or not he, you know, Cass is uh, going to be able to get enough damage on them. And once again, that burst gives him that lane control uh, so he can do fairly well against Corky in the top lane. So you also see Cassie Pia, they're going over to grab their own blue. So she's going to be taking that way back with her into the mid. Karthus wandering around mid as well, but uh, Corky and Jax still exchanging blows because right now, Barry Nice knows that if uh, if Kungin goes back to his tower once again, that thing's going to be going down. So he needs to be there to defend as long as possible. Bot lane, we also see Pantheon once again doing the dance with Urgot. Urgot's got a little bit of a lead. Actually, let, let me correct myself. He's got a pretty huge lead on Pantheon right now. Over 30 creep kills, 3 0 and 0 to 1 2 and 1. So it, it's, it's, it, it seems that this uh, this bot lane is not working out for a South Supreme as they felt it would. Yeah, and you saw Jarvan trying to come in for that gank. Uh, the creeps did hit him, so they know that they've got a ward in there. Uh, so not being very successful. Uh, Corky again going into that top lane, but we do have pretty good vision control for TCM right now, and so they, you know, they know generally where everyone is around the map. We don't have a ward top, but he knows he can hold on, uh, you know, uh, sit nicely for a little bit because Jarvan was seen in that bottom lane. Jarvan coming in once again, he will get this combo over this wall, so there's always the threat there for him to just wall off Urgot. It, I'm not sure that they have enough damage, though, even with Lulu, to pick up this kill. So it'll be tough for, uh, to see. But here's the thing, though. Nautilus is nearby. Farfane is waiting in that bush to see if Cell Supreme gets a little cheeky. And go for that. We got the swap in from Urga, and now we got the ultimate from Nautilus coming for the quick karma kill. Karthus ult now also coming down to, for a little bit extra insurance. But now we see Cell Supreme bot is now being dived. Three for free and a double kill coming in for Urgot right there. And all the meantime, in the meantime, and Jax is just top lane doing what he does best, and that is pushing lanes. Yeah, and so we will have a two tower advantage here for TCM. Um, they just have such great burst damage and control, you know, with the disables, with Urgot and with Nautilus, so they're able to pick up this tower. And Karthus, in the meantime, has been farming very successfully in the mid lane, despite oh, yeah. the early advantages for Cassiopeia. And so Karthus will be a serious threat. Uh, should have enough gold now, does have enough for a Rod of Ages and then uh, a little bit more ability power. So. You know, coming into the mid game, we're going to have all all this you know short range damage. They're all going to be right on top of Karthus's AOE, and then yeah. we've got the follow up from Jax. So we've got two really strong late game carries. We've got Lulu to protect them, so it's going to be difficult for T uh, Salad Supreme to burst them down. So once again, it'll be tough for Salad Supreme 
to kill people in these fights. Jax actually coming into this red buff, but is definitely <laughs> out of position right now. Throws off the stun, still trying to steal the red. He will be able to get it and then flash over the wall, so he is going to be fine here. And we got Pantheon ult coming in through the river. We have the ult from Cassiopeia be popped. And the last little skittle from Karthus will be able to finish her off under tower and Darwin has to standard away. Nautilus comes in to flash through the bush to get the last thing he needs and Jax coming in wants to get a stun off on Pantheon but the tower will keep him away from doing that. Urgot now joining everyone in the fray in the mid lane. Corky, top lane, you gotta get with your team man, get with the mid. You need to help defend this push, this is pretty bad. Oh, but we have the pull from Nautilus onto Jarvan. He will be able to get out of there, but the swap with Pantheon, they're able to pick up the quick kill. Jarvan jumping onto Karthus here, but the Lulu ult is going to protect them, so they can't pick up the kill. TCM able to get another kill, and earlier on, you saw that Pantheon ult, but he was kind of trying to guess where Jax yeah. would go. He threw it off into the river, uh, canceled it because he knew you know it wasn't going to fall down, so missing out on some of that damage. Just not enough control from Salad Supreme. They need to have just all that AoE uh, you know, right in front of them. Yep. But TCM, with just great fight control, um, again, you know, has a very difficult team to kill and then has, uh, you know, lots of disables to kind of chain and, you know, just negotiate fights. Corky was a little bit too far out of position. He was top lane, he was farming, he was away from the rest of his team, and all that burst damage from him could have definitely changed the tide of that battle because for most of that fight, TCM was actually in between two towers. They could have definitely done something with that, but... Unfortunately, we were a little bit far out, and now we have a massive lead. Huge lead for TCM here. 6k in gold ahead. Possibly a little bit more very soon, but we see Salad Supreme now still trying to get some offensive wards going. And Dragon is up, so we're going to try and grab that and catch up a little bit. But TCM is not too far behind. They know they're there, and we may have one more huge fight, very much like we had last game. 3v5 right now. It's in South Supreme's favor, but the level advantage for TCM is just so incredibly huge. We're trying to get the initiation. Pantheon comes in with the jump onto Urgai. He's very low, and Jarvan comes in with the dunk, trying to make something happen, but he will be the first one to go down. Not, uh, <laughs> Nautilus now up in front, trying to get the roots down, but Pantheon will also not be getting away either. Double kill onto Urgai. We've got the Karthus Assault coming in, and Corky and Cassiopeia are trying to get away. Flashes over the wall, trying to do what they can. we got Jax jumping to a minion to try and close the gap, but you know what? That is three for free for TCM. And they're so tough to kill right now, as we've already said. And Karthus picking up four stacks for his Magi's. Uh, so, you know, getting that quick ability power, he knows, all right, hey, we're snowballing from now on. Let's go with it. Um, you know, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. But, you know, Urgot last game, again, you know, Urgot can get that tanky build, has the Frozen Heart, but this time going for the Hex Trigger because he knows, okay, they've got a little bit of burst damage. No big deal. They still can't kill me because I'm going to have that shield there. And so there's just not enough uh, sustained damage from, you know, or survivability from Salad Supreme. But we actually have Corky oh, coming in with the Valkyrie. The Pantheon ult is coming on to the middle of the team, though. And so they will be able to catch them out of position here. But Urgot with the swap on the Pantheon back into Karthus. So they have the AoE going off. We have Corky chasing him down. There's the Lulu ultimate onto Jax, so they're able to pick up another kill, and now they're chasing the rest of the team. Jarvan desperately on, trying to pick up the slow. kill. Can't no. pick it up, but uh -oh. Cassie P actually going to be able to pick up a couple. She does pick up one. Lulu very close to going down. She does have the movement speed from both Karma and herself, but the pull from Farfane will get him out of there. It will be very tough for them to continue this chase. We got Cassie P. We got the poison trigger onto Nautilus, but we got the pop-up as well. Will we be able to get away with this? If we can get another chain from Karma, we can do it. There it is. We got the movement speed buff trying to continue this, but it keeps on hooking away just in time. We got his shield up as well, and Cassiopeia and Karma will not be able to follow up on this. How unfortunate. Urgot and Lulu were so ridiculously low. They were like under 200 each, and they both walked away from that. It's kind of like... And I'm sure Salad Supreme is now wishing, it's like, man, we should have picked Karthus. Yeah, they're just, <laughs> TCM just, you know, tearing it up right now. They have the shields to continue with that survivability. Um, not able to pick up the kills. You know, we do have a lot of damage from Salad Supreme, but they just can't control the fights like they would yeah. want to. They are pretty short range, so they're coming right into the squishy center of TCM, uh, particularly with that Karthus, which we said would be an issue later. Karthus able to pick up that blue buff. We'll see whether or not he continues with this AoE build, knowing he's going to be a target, and, you know, just suicide Karthus. It does 
doesn't even matter at this point. Right. Uh, or if he'll maybe start going with some defense and trying to sustain the fights. Though I suspect Karthus is just going to be going for a pure damage build. Uh, recognizes they can't take him. In the meantime, they are going for this Baron. And with the blue buff, with the mana he has, oh. Karthus will be able to spam there. Very quickly take it down. But Urgot is actually split from the rest of his team. So it is kind of going to be a 4v5 for them. Urgot's going to have to come in the back if he wants to engage. So TCM backing off for a second. Going to reposition themselves. Salad Supreme trying to make something happen in on Urgot here, but by the time they get the proper uh, engagement that they want, TCM is now here to reunite with that robot on legs, that shell of a man spitting out all of those missiles, and now we have everyone back reunited. TCM may actually just go ahead, clear. they're going to go ahead, clear these wards. They may go for another Baron attempt. They know they're in the neighborhood, though, so there is a little bit of a risk, but they don't want to get split again. But Karthus is actually going down bot lane to try and clear the wave to save that tier one tower. So then this could be this could be the signal for South Supreme to try and go in on this. They know they would be in for 4v5. They may This may be their best chance to get an engagement, but they're just going to go ahead, zoom, make a beeline around through to the mid. They might make an attempt on this tower, but Karthus is now already making his way back to the rest of the team, and so is Urgot. He did go inside go back and buy. He's working for the Randuins. He got himself a Hex Drinker as well. Frozen Heart is already built. He's 8-0-6. My god. And with all that cooldown reduction, uh, Urgot does scale very well. We actually have the Shirelias coming in, and then Jax with the stun. He's going to be able to jump on the middle of the team, and Nautilus sitting here with the rest of them. Jarvan was caught out position in the back. We do have some nice damage going off on the far faint and whatnot, as Sal Supreme's able to back out of there, but there's the Urgot swap with the Karthus ultimate, so very quickly they're able to pick up these kills. The hook from Nautilus on the Pantheon, they're able to pull him back, not able to grab it, but we still have Urgot just tanking that tower. He doesn't even care because of how much armor he has. They're able to pick up a number of kills. The Karthus AoE took down Jarvan mid ult animation. And Karthus just goes ahead and dives in suicide to kill the Karma. But yeah, the Karthus AoE. Jarvan was about to go in for the dunk. And the AoE kills him before he even gets a chance to raise the rocks. Wow. And you know what? We have TCM at such a huge advantage right now. Four members still up, pushing down. Corky's up. Most of the team should be coming up in about five seconds. So this is a free inhibitor. They should be backing shortly right after this. Possibly, you know, while they're all still a little bit low. Maybe in their best interest trying back, but Corky's got something to try and say about that. Wants to see if he can get that kill off a of very low Jax. But uh, they have enough of leeway to get back to safety. And I'll be honest, after watching TCM, <laughs> I would definitely be banning Urgot against them. Uh, we'll see, you know, if any of their competitors but, have checked hey, out this we got game. The, we got the Mage Eyes on Karthus now. Yeah, we, we had it earlier. <laughs> he's had it for a while yep. now. I'm not sure how many how stacks many, he's wait, had. Let's see how many stacks are we at right now. Uh, ten. Just, so he's at ten stacks. So. Halfway there. But um, regardless, the Urgot and Nautilus combo, it's such a devastating combo. They're two of the strongest champions in the game right now. Um, Nautilus just obviously so tanky and has a, a ton of damage and disables. And then Urgot being able to swap into Nautilus is just, you know, just absolutely terrifying. Um, so it's it's worked out very well for them. We'll see, you know, how Salad Supreme deals with it. They do have plenty of AOE damage. They, you know, if they can get all of TCM to kind of group up, that's what they want. Or maybe even Rush Baron. We'll see if they come up here. I think they're just trying to defend it. Um, yeah. But if they can get the fight that they want, they can, you know, maybe pick up the kills and then very quickly come back into this game. The thing is, though, Salad Supreme, can, they do not have any pink wards. They do not have any oracles. They have no means right now of clearing the barren area of wards. So even if they do decide to go sneak in and do it, it's going to be extremely high risk. And you, not even every member of TCM even has to be there to get the kills in the barren pit. But actually, Corky is out. Farming top lane, Jax is going to have something to say about it. But Urgot is also here, flashes over to get all the damage he needs. And we also got the Pantheon ult coming in to try and help save the day under tower. But TCM is successfully doing this dive very well. Pantheon is a cupcake and then decides to get squished. And Cassiopeia has to ult in order to get away to safety. But Destroyers is popped. The inhibitor is down, so there's no turret stopping them, keeping them from pursuing this. We're waiting for a hook from Nautilus to see what we can get. We get Jarvan. We get the stun follow-up from Jax and that Karthus ult to help secure the kill. And now Caspi is trying to plug away at Nautilus while he's going away. The one fang, one more fang could have done it, but the skittle from Karthus will finish the job for the ace and quite possibly game. 
We got TC on here focusing down of the Nexus Towers. We got all the minions, but the, uh, we got the one super minion taking care of all of the tanking that they need. We got members of South Spring coming back up, trying to do what they need to defend to keep themselves from losing this game. And Karthus is actually almost barely down, and so is Jax. The turret hit put him down so low. TCM now taking down the second Nexus turret. Open Nexus. I'm surprised their team's back. I mean, they're all very low. They don't yeah. want to let these kills happen. So Urgot just sitting here on his own. <laughs> uh, Jarvan not coming into him. They're they're kind of scared of TCM right now. He will yeah. finally jump onto him. And we do have Jax off in the distance. Throws off the <laughs> stun, but the Jarvan all <laughs> able to pick him up. Um, even so, it doesn't really matter. We have Cassipia <laughs> coming in. We'll probably be able to pick up this kill under Urgot. It'll be very tough for Urgot to get out of there. Urgot does not have you know, flash or anything. So right. we'll go down. But the next push should do it. Uh, and TCM will be able to pick up the series. But this, we have two inhibitors still up. We got the Nexus still up. I mean, TCM, they just let the minions push. Their Cell Supreme is... If Cell Supreme leaves the base, if they leave the base, they lose. Period. Because they got super minions. They got minions being pu pushing everywhere. It's a free Baron for TCM that cannot be contested whatsoever. And even then, Cell Supreme has no vision. They have one little ward there, which should be going away pretty soon. It's easy because they don't even need Baron. They just go ahead and push for the win right now. They're just securing their spot. And rightly so. Yeah, definitely. I mean, they, you know, they've had such great fight control. Um, once they're set up as a team, they're almost never going down. We have the Pantheon alt coming in here. Jarvan's able to get out of there. Pantheon going to jump on Karthus, but Karthus can definitely just throw off the AoE. We'll be able to pick up this kill as long as Pantheon can out. But actually the Juke, and so now <laughs> Karthus running into the rest of the team will go down. We have Jarvan getting the pool, and the Karthus alt will go off. How many kills can he get? Dose. There's one, but there's the second one for Nautilus. And then Farfane flashing after Karma. Uh, Karma... Probably a little bit too fast, but we do have the red buff. There's a lot of damage going off from Farfane, so they're able to pick up that kill. And then this finally will be the Nexus for TCM. Uh, right, he's actually get, still hunting for Koki. Yeah, slam. There's the ace. There we go. We found the Corky. We found the plane. And now Nexus is open. TCM will just go ahead, auto attack it for the win. Unless we got a big Lou going in here for... Oh, okay. Just wanted, just wanted to be sure. It's like, oh, man, that looks, that looks nice. I want to be in your fountain. No, never mind. So we got, we got the Nexus being focused here. GG, TCM Gaming 2-0 will be moving on to round of 16.